Hey, Danelle Jones here. This morning we are chatting about pain and specifically the pain that goes along with the transformation program. Um, we've had this running joke in the office over the last few weeks with a client around um, this idea of, you know, we want innovation. And, um, and, and so that was kind of put forward you know, months and months back and the team been running around doing the stuff. And, you know, we're now sort of six months into some focused attention and uh, we're dealing with change fatigue, we're dealing with, you know, exhaustion, we're dealing with frustration, we're dealing with all these things. And it's a bit like, someone actually used the metaphor this week, that it was a bit like the Tinder profile pic that you get. Um, and then you, you know, great pick, swipe right, and then you turn up to the date in person and it is not, the, that, that, that does not look like your profile pic. And so this poor team's right in the middle of well, what's our plan and our strategy for dealing with this, you know. We jumped into this thing because it looked great and the reality of dealing with it is really painful. Um, and it's, it's just part of what we deal with in transformation. There is going to be pain and frustration and, and all those things. So um, I think the key here is, is where that pain sits. And I have this phrase that I use quite often around pain landing in the right place. Um, I, I think I got it off Jenny Wood, one of my early mentors. I'm pretty sure it was Jen that said it to me. Um, and, and she had, she had this idea of, you know, making sure that as human beings, our natural tendency is to dive in and try and help people. We see when we see them in pain, when we see them in frustration, when we see, um, you know, that hurt or that extra burden of work as we're changing. And sometimes that first instinct is not necessarily the, the right instinct and it's not necessarily the right thing to do. So you know, pain can come up for all sorts of reasons. We have just the general pain of changing the way that we work. And, you know, sometimes it's as simple as you you get in to start changing something and and people, they're just not up for trying to rehash what they're doing. You know, better the devil you know. Sure, it might be a painful process today, but that uncertainty about where we're going to means that we might not be ready to sign up for more pain to try and change it. Um, and then you have pain when you change a process and it ends up with, let's say, a bunch of manual work in a particular area and people are kind of struggling to catch up and, um, and you, you sort of end up generating this, this enormous workload on a group of people or a team. Um, and, and pain can come about when we're, when we're changing things and as a result, something pops up and we don't know how to do it in the system today or um, you know, we end up generating all that manual process. And then you might also have pain with individuals that are helping to drive that change for you and that frustration and that change fatigue and just the constant weight of not quite getting to this better place that we want to be in. Um, so pain can pop up in all sorts of different areas. And as I said, I have this phrase that I've adopted and use that says we want to make sure that the pain is landing in the right place. So... I'm going to use the example of um, a, a sales process for a product because I think it's, it's, a, it's an example that kind of gets to some of the core of the um, organizational structural issues, the, the technology issues. So let's say we have a salesperson who is out there selling a product for our company. And then once that sale is made, there's a flow through effect through different parts of the organization around let's say, the fulfillment of that offer, whether that be delivering some technology, um, you know, maybe it's just sending a physical product out to customers, um, you know, it could be all sorts of things that are involved in actually getting that product to customers. And then, let's keep it really simple, there's there's probably some kind of maintenance, but let's, let's just say for this example that, that third step is around the invoicing that happens on the back end of the financial process. So let's keep it really simple, right? Sales up front, some sort of fulfillment, some sort of billing and invoicing at the back end. Uh, and let's say that the sales team who are out there talking to customers every day and have a sense of what customers are asking for, so let's say the sales team come up with a new product. And let's say that that new product is um, a new idea or it puts something together in a new way. And and they know that they can sell it. And so the sales team go back out and they sell that new product and they generate demand for that new product. And it gets right to the core of your customer's problems and 
it goes bananas, right? Sales jump. All of a sudden, you've got all of this demand flooding in. Sales team, great work. Hit all our KPIs around sales. The knock-on effect for that around what it takes to fulfill that order. So maybe um, that that team that are more in the delivery or the operations part of the business now have to rejig the way that they do things to be able to fulfill those orders. There might be a whole bunch of process change that goes on. Maybe it's not as simple as just putting two things in a box and sending it rather than one thing in a box and sending it. Maybe there's some interaction between these particular products and if you don't quite set it up right, then um, then maybe that doesn't work. And then conversely on the back end with the finance team, maybe putting those two products together into an invoice isn't as straightforward as we expected. And so all of a sudden you um, unexpectedly start generating a whole bunch of manual work in the finance team to try and work out where that extra money is coming from. You know, we're getting this flood of demand, how it's landing in the bank account, what does that mean for invoicing? Um, and so all of a sudden you could be generating this work further down the track. Um, that the, the sales team aren't aware of. And so th this is that example of what I talk about when I say pain in the right place. So the sales team who have just gone and sold that product and effectively hiked it over the fence for somebody to deliver an invoice, they're not feeling that pain. And so when they come up with a new idea and they present it to someone and someone says, no, we don't want to do that, because we see all of that other pain, sales team don't understand because to them, it's what customers want. Why aren't we doing this? And so there's this dynamic that needs to play out around how do we help to make sure that everybody understands the impact of those decisions? It's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about flipping your organizational structure on its head. Uh, because when you have these functional silos, you tend to throw work over the fence and you tend to focus on a good handover and, and throwing work over the fence and, and the knock on down the track. Those people that started out potentially with very good intentions don't see all of that pain, they don't see all that waste, they don't see all that manual process that they might be generating on the back end. Same with process change. If we go into a process change conversation and we're not fully aware of the impacts and that holistic view, we can end up doing the same things in trying to change a process and dropping that pain down the um, further down the tree. And so what it might look like to try and change that dynamic, if we go back to that sales example, is what say you had you know, the, the sales team come up with this new product, they want to sell it, they go out and they generate all this demand, but as part of the deal, they also have to man the phones. They also have to be on the phones when customers are calling up with queries, support inquiries, um, maybe complaints, um, and they have to be in that environment so that they are with the call center team when those inquiries are coming in. Or maybe they have to spend some time in the finance department. So we, we recognize that all of a sudden we've generated a bunch of manual process. Well, actually, those salespeople have to go and sit with the finance team and help work through it. So it's about finding this balance between, um, sure, we're going out and doing new things, and we're going to flow that, that the result and the impacts of our work through the system, but making sure that the pain is landing in the right place, making sure that people have an appreciation and an understanding of the impact of their actions. Because when we organize ourselves in functional silos, we don't see the pain in the other groups that are around us that are often required to help us to deliver for our customers. Turn all of those people into the same team, one team end to end, everybody sees it, everybody feels that pain. And so it's about building that network and it's about building in a system that helps you to understand the impact of your actions. And that's what I mean by pain in the right place. So it's not fair that the sales team can go and sell a new product and then chuck it over the fence and everybody else is hurting. They need to feel that pain too. They need to understand the impact of their actions. So that's what I mean by pain in the right place. Um, and I would love to hear, I'm sure you've got examples, so please drop me a comment below. Um, and it's this idea of pain in the right place is actually leads really nicely into something big that's happening for me this week. I've just launched the Change Thinking Masterclass. 
and in that masterclass we're going to be talking about making sure that pain is landing in the right place because that's part of what you need to do to make sure that you're setting up an environment where people can learn and where you can influence their behavior and so if you've got triggers and you've got pain point happening in the in the wrong place um, then you're not going to be incentivizing the behavior that you want to see in those other people around you and you're not going to be having the impact and the influence that you need to actually make sure that you cement that transformational change in your business so i'm going to pop a link at the bottom of this video through to the registration page where you can go and watch a short video on what the class is all about um, and and maybe sign up and i would love to hear from you so if you've got an example of pain landing in the wrong place if you've got some questions if you've got some challenges if you've got some queries if, if you're kind of completely confused drop me a comment below i would love to hear from you and wherever you are in the world today i hope that you are having an awesome day and that you have a great week ahead